Hey everybody, this is Chris AC Cycle 3, Week 22 Orchestra, and our focus today is on Igor Stravinsky and the Rites of Spring. So we started off in the Romantic period with Peter Tchaikovsky, then we kind of went into like Impressionism with Debussy, and so now we are going to focus on, we're going to move on into the Modern period with Igor Stravinsky. So when I start my lesson off, as always, I'd like to take a few minutes to review and then I will go ahead and introduce our composer. So Igor Stravinsky um, is a Russian. Uh, he was born in Russia and he had um, very musical parents. His family was very musical. They did not want him to follow in their footsteps. And so they sent him off to study law. But then in college, he met a friend and his dad was a composer who became his mentor. So he ended up um, doing music anyway. So, um he eventually moved on to Switzerland, France, and then moved into the United States in the 1930s. And so um, you can look up more about his life and how like his wife and his daughter died and things like that. Whatever you kind of want to share with your class, whatever is interesting um, or uh, that you find um, good to share with your class about the composer. And so then moving on to uh, the Rite of Spring. Um, so this was debuted in 1913 and it did kind of cause like a little small riot um, because we were so used to hearing other music, you know, in the classical period, the romantic period. And so this was kind of the breakthrough into the modern period. And it was very, very different. And so when you listen to the song, I'm not sure if you've heard it yet, but when you listen to the song, it almost sounds like a cacophony. And so it was very strange and very different for that time. So when it was first presented and they went in, to hear this, the um, they started off kind of liking it, but then the further it got, they started like um, throwing vegetables and kind of booing the orchestra. And it's um, so, like 40 people got like kicked out and arrested or something. So um, very controversial at the time. <laughs> um, so I think that if you're a fan of this modern period, you'll probably like this song. If not, and you want something more peaceful, this may not be your jam. So I'm not a huge fan of it, but um, I can still appreciate the musical um, talent that Stravinsky put into this. He was kind of different. He thought outside of the box. So, um, and at one point when he was living in the United States, he even tried to rearrange um, the national anthem. So, and it didn't go over very well. Anyway, um, so let's go ahead and get started into this piece. I don't have a lot to say about it. Um, we don't have a lot of the mel same melodies coming back throughout and different themes and things like that. So it's pretty simple. When we start off, we hear a bassoon, which um, usually in this time to play notes this high, a composer would use a horn. Um, but he used a bassoon and the bassoon just played really, really high. Um, so that was something else different that he did and something to note to your class. So a bassoon, there's a picture of it in your foundations guide. It's a double reeded instrument. It's in the woodwind family. And you can find a picture of that to show your class if you would like. I have a lot of these instruments on posters, so I just point to them when I'm talking about them so they know what to imagine in their mind. So I'll go ahead and get this one started. Like I said, you'll hear the bassoon when it first comes in, and then we'll soon hear some clarinets. So right here, I'm gonna stop it at 20 seconds. Um, now you're gonna hear like some clarinets come in, um, like regular clarinets and bass clarinets to come in and um, kind of harmonize with this bassoon. So you knew what to hear with the bassoon first because it was by itself. So that those other instruments that you're hearing behind it right now are um, some clarinets. Hear that clarinet sound. Okay, so the bassoon just played the, that first melody that it did in the beginning. And so now for its echo, we're going to hear um, the English horn. Thank you. 
So you can't hear it very well. I don't know if your class, if you can't hear it very well, you don't have to share this part with your class, but um, you can hear the violins a little bit and their strings are being plucked. This, this whole song is just kind of different than what we're used to listening to in orchestra, even in cycle one and cycle two. So it's just a little different. Um, here's where we start to get that, um, maybe not a cacophony, but like this unrhythmic um, scene going on. It's really kind of hard to explain and put into words, but um, we'll continue to listen. We've got some violins going on. And in the classical music for dummies book, it talks about animal calls and birds. And honestly, there's parts of this where I do kind of picture almost like a Bambi scene where the forest is on fire and the animals are running or something. It's kind of what it makes me think about. And you can engage with your class and see what it makes them think about or feel as well. So I'll keep going. So right here, those soft instruments, those soft little pretty um, uh, melody instruments going right now, that's the flute. But other than that, we have a lot going on in the orchestra right now. We've got um, horns and strings and woodwinds kind of, they're all, we're starting to get into what we're talking about with this song and what probably um, caused that little mini riot or backlash. So we have a lot of this flute and oboe going on. Um, so those are kind of some of those instruments you'll hear. If you have a hard time with this one because they're they're kind of all playing their own melody, so this one can be a little harder to listen for if you're not if your ear isn't tuned into it. Then I would recommend listening, maybe on like maybe you could Google it or look on YouTube, listening to the, just those instruments by themselves. Um, I'm really used to whatever the sound the instrument's making, so it's a little easier for me. But if you have a hard time with it and you haven't been in band and you don't really know what you're listening for, then I would recommend kind of um, listening to those separately so that you know what you're hearing here. But anyway, so a lot of flute and oboe going on right now. And that high one that just came in, that's a clarinet. So we're hearing more of that offbeat uh, rhythm going on. And so, but that's kind of cool because we can pull in 10 whistle vocabulary and maybe the kids will call it a cacophony. Don't know. So we're kind of growing here and it probably sounds like every instrument is just playing whatever they want at this point. Um, but did warn you, caused a riot. So, um, and then anyway, so it's going to grow right here and then all of a sudden it just stops and you go back to the bassoon in the beginning. You just hear the bassoon that we heard um, in the beginning.
Okay, if you can hear that bum, 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 those are violins being plucked. And to me, it sounds like somebody's tiptoeing or something. So you can listen for those violins. Now the horns are doing the tiptoeing. So those really high pitched brass sounds are trumpets. And then this, this like a uh, scary little melody that you're hearing in the forefront, those are the strings. That's what they, the strings have been playing this the whole time. Then the tiptoeing again from the horns. So it kind of stopped there like, whoop, and then you hear this and those are some horns. Um, trombones are in there too. And the drums that we just heard right there are kettle drums. Trumpet. It's a beautiful little flute melody right there. ding 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 in the background that's the um the triangle it sounds like and that's in the percussion family So I'm going to stop it here at six minutes and 40 seconds. So we're ending that section. It's called adolescent girls. I don't, I'm not going over the names of the sections with these because then the next one is ritual of abduction. So I'm not going over, um, that with my class, but you can with yours. Um, so we're going to end that section and we're going to go into like a new section. And this one almost makes me picture like the, um, the scene from wizard of Oz where, uh, Dorothy starts to fall asleep and the, the, bicycle and the wind and all that stuff's going on so that's what it makes me picture for some reason it just seems like a tornado or something that we're going into for this last section
So right here when we have those majestic horns, we're also hearing those high-pitched woodwinds. It sounds like flutes could possibly be piccolos, but it depends on if the flutes just playing high or the piccolos just playing at a normal. <laughs> so we have some woodwinds and some horns going back and forth here. Horns. Some more kettle drums. section going on right there with the the boom or the that's the kettle drums um okay so we're at seven minutes 51 seconds and so this is just going to build and then all of a sudden it's very different from the other ones that we've heard of course it is um all of a sudden it just stops all of a sudden and it's over that's it Yeah, that's it. So um, very different and unique. And you may have some kids that are like, wow, this was the most exciting one we've listened to. I love it so much. And then you might get others that are like, this just, this just sounds like a disaster. So um, anyway, so that's my notes on that. Not a, not a ton to say. It's not a very long piece. So, um, But the good news is, is that after you introduce this composer and this piece, it's really so simple from here on out. So um, I'll go over in week 23, um, the orchestra seating and things like that. And then week 24 is like review. So you guys are almost done. And if you have any questions, let me know.